So the next live session is from uh, Huawei Technology, a global provider of ICT and smart device. So let's welcome the, the Vice President of the Huawei Paris Research Center, Mr. Magui Depa. So you can start your presentation. So first of all, I'm very, ha very happy to be here and also present basically on, on behalf of all my colleagues, uh, the research which is being done by Huawei uh, and especially in France. And I look forward also that uh, uh, we can interact with the students uh, 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 here and also in the future also that you interact with also my colleagues within the different research centers. So I don't know uh, how far you know, know things about Huawei, but you have to know that Huawei is one of the biggest companies in the ICT industry with more than uh, basically or roughly around 200,000 employees. One thing which is very specific about our company is that half of the employees uh, work in the R&D. So what I mean here by R&D is that uh, basically uh, they do research and which means that you have one chance over two to meet an employee in our company who comes from the R&D. So it means that if you're coming from an engineering, I would say background, it's very nice because you have this kind of spirit which is related to the engineering schools where you belong to and then people are quite technical. Of course, we're located in the majority of the countries you, you, you know, uh, more than 170. Something also quite important is that uh, Huawei used to be a Chinese company. Today, it's what we call a Chinese-based company in the sense that you have nearly one-third or even more of the employees who are non-Chinese and which also showcases also the growth of this company as a global, I would say, corporation. Now, something which is also quite important uh, for you to understand is that uh, the company is quite young. It's like around 30 years of existence. 1987, we founded Huawei. And it started by being what we call a communication technology company, meaning mostly providing to operators the G era that you know, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G now, and in the future, 6G. But there has been a shift during the years where instead of just being concentrated on CT, we are now more what we call an ICT company, information and communication technology. And by that, what I mean is that the portfolio of solutions that the company offers today and the plethora of, I would say, uh, disciplines on which you can work has increased drastically. Today, we're not just providing solutions to carriers, meaning operators, but we also provide a whole brand of consumer devices. I think you know us from the smartphone business, but we do laptops, we do screens, we do helmets, we do, we do, we do, we do, um, we do uh, glasses, a lot of bunch of, of, of things which are related to what we call wearables and consumer. But then we also work in the enterprise business by providing to the major, I would say, uh, uh, enterprises, SNCF and all these companies, all the data centers and the computing capability they require, and especially also the connectivity through Wi-Fi solutions. And the last thing which has been growing intensively, and you can see it from the arrow growing quite fast, is what we call basically the cloud and AI. And you have to know that today, Huawei has become a big player in the AI, where we're selling computing platforms. We are also providing what we call frameworks. We have a framework called MindSpore, which is the equivalent of TensorFlow, which enables you, of course, to have a plethora of, I would say, AI solutions that you can play with. Now, the good part of that about the company today is that uh, we nearly are able to provide end-to-end -end solutions to our customer which means that if you work in our company, then of course you don't work in a very narrow point, meaning only on the device like Apple, uh, only on uh, basically the, 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 the network like Ericsson, Nokia and others. We are able to provide you a plethora of basically exchanges with our various engineers. So whenever you start optimizing one part of the network, one part of the device, you can also understand the impact it has on the global, I would say end-to-end -end solution. As I said before, today we have four businesses uh, with a lot of, of people doing research in that. And we are providing the, the three things which we think are the most important things, which are what we call the devices, the connectivity, and the computing solutions. And these three, of course, have also, I would say, small impact on various, I would say, uh, 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 domains. And you can see them here on my slide where we're talking about smartphone wearables, smart home devices, telematics for devices, and connectivity, it's around basically OEM, uh, intelligent energy network and computing, 
everything that is now a hot topic for, for many of you. The company has been growing steadily since uh, the beginning. Today, we're roughly around $120 billion of revenue. What's the most important thing uh, uh, at the moment in the company is that the investment in R&D has been in a steady state and nearly 15% of our revenue is invested yearly on basically R&D. Just to give you a hint of the amount of money that makes, one of the biggest institutions in France, which is called CNRS, which is not only working in the ICT discipline, but overall in all the discipline, the budget is roughly around 3 billion to 4 billion. We're at a factor of five compared to big organizations uh, like CNRS, which employ around 20,000 people. This, this is also one of the signs and the vitality of our company and also explains basically uh, the impact that you're seeing everywhere with basically the brands of Huawei showing up here and there. At the European level, we have basically many research centers. Uh, today, uh, we have more than 2,000, in fact, researchers. 80% of our uh, researchers are recruited locally. And today, in terms of investment, in terms of Huawei, we are in the top five, to be honest. Uh, that was in 2017, in terms of investment in R&D. And of course, this is in all the disciplines that uh, if you're a junior coming from, uh, let's say, a EE or CS department, meaning electrical engineering or computer science, are roughly the topics that you've been studying at school and on which basically we're working on them at the European level. Now, in the case of France, which... Uh, which, which, is, which is quite also uh, uh, important. We have today five research centers. We have one which is called the Lagrange Mathematical Research Center on, on, on computing, which basically focuses mostly on fundamental mathematics, theoretical computer and data communication science. It's located in downtown Paris. And roughly the aim is to have around 30 people who are top-notch researchers in the field. Then we have what we call the Paris Research Center, which is in fact located to be more honest in Boulogne Biancourt. Uh, uh, so if you have an opportunity to come, I strongly invite you. And there we're working around the mathematics and algorithms related to basically wireless, optical communication, data communication, and software. We have roughly 150 people working in Boulogne Biancourt, whereas Lagrange, we're targeting around 30 people. In the Nice Research Center, which is located, in fact, in Sofia Antipolis, we have 30 people working on the image signal processing, mostly for our phones. As you know, one of the big hypes of phones today is not that you can make calls or surf on internet, but rather the fact that you can take advanced pictures. And today, of course, also one of the big game changer is the fact that uh, you can use AI. Then we have also a research center in Grenoble, uh, which works mostly on uh, uh, sensors. And as you know, a phone with its capability to sense the environment and especially the, to monitor many uh, um, aspects of your life can bring a lot of uh, value to the health industry and other aspects. And my colleagues in Grenoble are intensively working on all the sensors that invent our devices. And the last one also, which is quite important, is basically the fashion. Fashion meaning aesthetic, where we have also in downtown um, Paris uh, a very nice research center working on mostly the designs of our basically products that we sell. Roughly today in Huawei, in terms of R&D, we're roughly 300 people. Uh, you have to put this in comparison with the total number of collaborators that we have in France, which is around roughly 1,000. So it's still like one third of the workforce which is working on research. Uh, all the people that we recruit are at the PhD level. This is something that is uh, quite important for you to know, meaning that when you join us, we strongly push you to do a PhD. We can, for some cases, of course, uh, 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 do some exceptions, but the majority of our recruitments are done at the PhD level. Of course, in terms of incorporating and coming in our teams, if you're going to R&D, we have, of course, a portfolio of, uh, of, of uh, positions which are related to what we call industrial PhD which means in French, in French, a PhD or in thèse cifre, in which we engage uh, with various, I would say, universities to take some students coming from uh, uh, top universities, top engineering schools, so that they can get a grasp of basically an industrial experience by doing research with us, but also at the end, they can get their PhD. 
And roughly, this is a scheme that we've been building intensively with the various universities, where you would spend three days a week uh, at our offices, two days a week at universities. There's a bit of flexibility in that. And this is a very good experience also to put in your CV and that you can also exploit uh, in front. Uh, we also work. Uh, 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 we also work uh, uh, with with uh, with uh, with various, of course, uh, universities in terms of hackathons that we've been building, data challenges, and also organizing basically and sponsoring a lot of events. And you can see them here and there in various places on the web. I strongly also encourage you to at last come to our offices. They're quite neat. They're in a spirit of dynamic. There's a spirit of exchanges. Uh, the, the, the offices also provide you all the plethora of a good environment and spirit of research. And the majority of the people that we recruit are quite young. We invest heavily on young people because we believe that the biggest breakthroughs are made at uh, a young age. And we want to invest on, I would say, future talents in France, locate them in France, and be able to grow with them in France so that we can have important breakthroughs to be done. Of course, you can ask me much more questions offline. I know that my time is limited. Maybe I can take one or two questions if they are. But in any case, uh, uh, my colleagues are also available to answer to, your, to, my question, to your questions. And you are strongly also invited to uh, come and visit our offices and have some discussions with our experts. Okay, th thank you Ryan, for the presentation. So I think this is a question that a lot of people uh, are curious about. So how the, how the Huawei company can get the big advantage compared with competitor in such a short time? Okay, uh, quite easy, quite easy. The, the, the main driver is basically R&D. Uh, the, the reason is that we are two things. First is that you have to know that Huawei is a uh, um, employee owned company in the sense that we're not on the stock market, which means that basically uh, the company is owned by its own employee. When you incorporate Huawei, you have a share of the company. And this of course stabilizes the long-term, I would say commitments that we do. We don't fluctuate and there's a sense of stability on the directions we, which we cho which you choose. And of course, those, those, uh, those directions that we cho cho chose are based on the leadership of our company. Second, of course, is, is as I told you, the place that the R&D takes in this company. Classical French companies, uh, even internationally, would have only 15 of its workforce doing R&D. Here we have half of the company, which is doing R&D, which is quite exceptional. And this is also related to the kind of investment. And the fact that we are strongly have kept this spirit of R&D makes us what we call a global startup. And this is why we have been growing. We haven't changed in our culture. And we, the initial spirit of startup at the beginning is still kept at this level. Whereas in classical companies, when you start as a startup, you have a big R&D part and progressively it starts reducing to incorporate more and more, I would say, employees. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. So, uh, so what kind of profile you think that, uh, what kind of profile that uh, you are interested in and do you provide do you do you always organize some uh, say some some training program for this uh, for the young talents and you said always in, heavily invested in for the young people yeah so we're we're looking at people with strong fundamental skills in mathematics and physics i think uh, the background and this is why we think that France is a very good country from that point of view, because we know that there is a strong commitment in the education which is made on the fundamentals. Why? Because uh, a lot of problems that we're dealing with are basically related to a lot of algorithms uh, that we need to solve, but also a lot of, of expertise in the fundamentals. Uh, we're less, of course, looking at people who are, let's say, expert in something in the sense that when you incorporate, you have the ability to be trained by a lot of people in our company uh, uh, towards, I would say, more practical problems. So I would say what we're looking for is mostly people with some strong, basically, analytical and fundamental skills in mathematics, physics, and that are also looking at challenges and challenging problems. 
Yeah, as a master student in France, I can confirm you is in France is heavily invested in the fundamental knowledge. So, uh, how can I? Uh, you mentioned that we can visit the lab from far away. So, how how can I ask to, to arrange for the visit to the lab? So my colleague, uh, uh, Jauli, uh, is responsible of that. You can write her an email. There's no problem of citizenship. You can come and visit. And we do some kind of, uh, to avoid that, we just have single shot visits. We try to group by groups when people want to come. And then, and, then, and then we can explain better when you're in our offices. So Jauli, uh, 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 my colleague, uh, you can, uh, she can provide you the email. And then you can contact her. And then we can do a joint, I would say, visit of our research of the students or, or the, 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 the people who want to join us so that they can have a better experience and explanation about our company. There is no problem also of not being, uh, I see here, French citizen or not. Of course, it's not an issue. Uh, you, you come and you're, 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 uh, it's totally open to come and, and have a discussion with our, with our experts.